Part 2. Investment America While much has been written about the shortcomings of corporate America, little has been written about the failure of its owners to assert their ownership rights. So in the second section of the audiobook, I discuss in some depth the nature of the controlling ownership of our corporations today. The stockholders of Investment America, dominated by our giant financial institutions, hold awesome power. Yet these firms all too rarely exercise that power, in essence neglecting the legitimate interests of the ultimate stock owners, the beneficiaries whom they are duty-bound to represent. The failure of these institutions to demand their rights of ownership, as well as their failure to honor their responsibilities of ownership, bears a heavy burden for what went wrong in Investment America. Why did it go wrong? In part because of the profound conflicts of interest that permeated the field of financial intermediation, and in part because the behavior of these stockholders changed radically, from a traditional focus on the wisdom of long-term investing to the folly of short-term speculation, a change in which the momentary precision of the price of a corporation's stock came to overwhelm the eternal verity of the intrinsic value of the corporation itself, however difficult to measure. Our nation's financial institutions transmogrified themselves from members of an own-a-stock industry into members of a rent-a-stock industry, enabling corporate managers to run roughshod over their owners. This pervasive substitution of direct owners of stocks, principals, by intermediaries, agents, has created a host of new challenges to the return of owners' capitalism. While there are no easy ways out of this morass, I again offer some constructive suggestions for reform.